Vandiyadeva entered the Asthana Hall before the scholars. He surmised that the one sitting majestically on a lofty throne must be the little prince. Many people stood around him with their hands tied and their mouths buried. A man stood holding many of the leaves that had arrived that day. The accountant was waiting for the account. The garrison leaders stood waiting for the daily orders from Chinapulvatere. Crews were waiting to do their jobs. Standing behind the throne were some cheerleaders who were throwing bronze swords. A man was ready with a box of betel nuts in his hand. Even Vandiyathevan, who never backs down to anyone in his pride and arrogance, approached the little Pavatariyar with only a little reluctance. Chinnavar was still seen as superior in Virakampiram than the elder. When he saw our hero, he exclaimed, Who, brother, are you? Where do you come from? He asked. Seeing the heroic youths, the stern face of the little farmer will lighten up. He is keen to recruit youth soldiers from all over the country into his police force. Commander. I am from Kanchipuram. The prince has sent me a straw. Vandiyathevan replied in a humble voice. When Kanchipuram was mentioned, the face of the small farmer turned dark. What? What did you say? He asked again. I came from Kanchipuram with the leaf given by the prince. Where? Give it like this. Even though he asked indifferently, there was a little excitement in his voice. Valavarayan took the scroll of straw with subdued pressure and shouted, Commander! To the straw emperor! He said. Regardless, the small gardener bought the leaf and looked at it eagerly. He gave it to a bystander and asked him to read it. Asking, nothing new. He muttered to himself. Commander! The straw I brought! Said Vandiyathevan. What about the straw? I'll give it to the emperor. No, to deliver myself into the hands of the emperor. Oko! Don't you trust me? Did Prince Adithar tell you so? At that time, the Tanjore Fort commander's face burst into flames. The prince did not say so, his cousin ordered it. What? What? Where did you see the elder? On the way, I stayed one night at the house of Sambuvarayar of Kadampur. I happened to see him there. He also gave me this ring. A.G.A. Why didn't you tell me this before? Did you stay the night in Kadapur? Who else had come? Many dignitaries came from Malnadu, Nadu Nadu, and Tirumunapati countries. I are you, I are you. Then I ask you to be patient. First you give this leaf to the emperor and leave. Then the Tamil poets will come. They will be talking about wealth. Take this child to the emperor. Said the young hunter to a warrior standing nearby. Vandiyadeva followed the warrior further towards the interior of the palace. The throne of the Chola Empire, which spread out on three sides to the sound of the waves, had for some time become a bed of sickness. Emperor Parintaka Sundara Chola was reclining on that throne. Although he was giving medical treatment to others, he had to give darshan to important people on some important occasions. It was necessary for the good of the kingdom that the ministers, generals and soldiers of the Vilakar army should visit him daily. Vandiyadeva was speechless when he saw the sick and emaciated appearance of the emperor, who was known as Asagaya Surer, who was active in many war fronts and was known as Asagaya Surer, who was called Sundara Kalar all over the country, and who was famous for being similar to Cupid in beauty. Tears welled up in his eyes. He approached and bowed in submission and reverently held out the leaf. The emperor took the straw and asked, Where did you come from? Whose straw? He asked in Eneswaram. Lord! I have come from Kanji. A leaf from Prince Adithar. Vandiyathevan said to Nath. The emperor's face immediately brightened. Chakravarthani Vanamadavi, the daughter of Tirakovalar Malayaman, was sitting near him. Looking at her, he said, Devi. The straw has come from your son. After her saying that he read. Aha! The prince has built a golden palace in Kanchi. You and I must come and stay there for a few days. As soon as he said that, 
the emperor's face shrunk more than before. Devi! Have you seen what your son is doing? My master, the world-renowned emperor Parantaka, gave all the gold that was in the palace and made it a gold roof and made it a gold roof. None of the elders who appeared in our clan have built the palace where they live with gold. They considered building a temple more important than building a palace. But Adita Kari Kalan has done this. Aha! What remedy is there for this blasphemy? Said. The face of the goddess, who had brightened a little on hearing that the straw had come from her son, again became more withered than before, she could not say anything in response. At that time, Vandiyadeva summoned courage and courage and said, Prabhu! What your son has done is not wrong. He has done the right thing. Aren't mother and father the primary deities for a son? Therefore, is it right that their son built a golden house for them and the goddess to live in? Sundara Kalar smiled and said, Brother! You are a nobody. You are very intelligent, you speak tactfully. But if the son's mother and father are deities, others are not? Shouldn't you take a golden temple for the deity whom everyone worships? Said. Lord. The father is the god to the son, the king is the god to all the people. The Vedic Puranas say that the kings have the aspect of Thirumal. Therefore, it is appropriate that they took the gold for themselves. Said our hero. Sundara Chola again addressed Malayamon Thiruma, Devi. How clever this child is, do you see? If Aradithan had the help of all these people, we would not have to worry about him. We would not have to inquire about his careless nature. Said. Then, looking at Vandiyadeva, he said, Brother. It is not possible for me to come to Kanchi whether the Golden Mansion is built properly or not. You see. I have always been bedridden. It is impossible to undertake a long journey. Aditya must come here to see me. We also desire to see him. Come again tomorrow. I ask you to rewrite the paper. Said. At this time, Vandiyadeva became aware of a large crowd approaching the Darshan Hall. Aha! It seems that the crowd of poets is coming. They will probably be accompanied by a small gardener. Then you can leave without being able to say what you need to say. In four words, it is necessary to say it now. After thinking like this for a few seconds, he decided, Emperor. Please. Please listen to my request. You must leave Tanjore. You are in danger here. Danger. Danger. While he was saying this, Chinapalyavatarayar entered the Darshan Hall. Poets followed him. Vandiyathevan's last words fell on the ears of the fort commander. His face was burning with anger.